Awesome. So the first question that I have for you is, let's say that you're a data scientist working on pricing different products on our e-commerce site, right? And the online mm -hmm. pr price is dependent on the availability of the product, the demand, and the logistics cost of providing it to the end consumer, right? Uh, so you discover that suddenly the algorithm is vastly underpricing a certain consumer product. What are the steps that you take in diagnosing the problem? So you mentioned that the price of a product is dependent on the availability, uh, the logistic uh, cost, and the demand, right? Yep. Um, so, and then you said uh, a particular type of products are getting underpriced by the algorithm. Yep. Now, I guess, um, the first of all, I'd like to understand, um, like, uh, where are we getting this, uh, the demand uh, information from? Like, uh, I'm sure the logistic cost is something that the company handles, so they're able to keep a track on what uh, it costs uh, to uh, ship and stuff. Um, but how do we get the demand aspect of uh, the of a product? Um, is it from a competitor's website? Is it a third-party website? Or is it, like, for data that we trust really well? Uh, let's say it's from our own internal data. It's from the amount of people that have historically bought the product in the past. Um, yeah, let's say that we have availability of all the other kinds of uh, data on our website as well, like uh, user clicks, you know, like search, uh -huh. et cetera. Okay. And then uh, you mentioned that uh, the algorithm is underpricing uh, a particular um, group of products, right? Um, do we know um, how much, like, is it... Are we saying it's underpriced because uh, what other computers are selling the same product at, or is it that uh, the the product used to cost X dollars in, in like five months ago and now it's showing X minus you know some Y percentage, right? Like there's yeah. a, a significant drop in uh, in the price. Yeah. Now how does that? Or which yeah, I one is the case? Yeah, it's the latter. So let's say that we saw that it's dropped by like 50% from like five months ago. So yeah. from a historical uh, trend mm -hmm. downwards. Um, okay. From and then um, is there a, a time aspect to uh, the drop that we noticed? Like did that, when did, when did it start? Was it around New Year or was it around like, you know, um, you know, just middle of the year or kind of thing? Um, so, yeah. I mean, the, the point, the, the, the time when it, uh, when the price dropped uh, could also tell us something about what happened in the macroeconomic structure during that time, right? Maybe yeah. it's a product which was just recently banned uh, for some reason or, you know, had some negative reviews and that's why the, the demand just fell off, right? Something like that. So if we know some information around when the, when we started noticing this, um, that can also kind of hint some aspects here. Yeah, so I would say that, let's say it's not based on time either. Uh, so it's not based off New Year's or anything like okay. that. Um, mm. Let's say that it was uh, more of like something that happened within the past uh, few months. So progressive. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So in the past few months, we are noticing a particular type of consumer product uh, that's um, getting priced lower than uh, usual. And um, we are pretty sure that it's nothing to do with the time of the year um, because um, because it, it, it I mean the prices were pretty constant uh, for the past many years. It's just that in the last few months we have seen it seen it drop, right? Yep. Now the things that uh, that contribute towards pricing a product um, are definitely going to be around that product's uh, use towards uh, to the uh, public that consumes it. Right. So um, what kind of a product is this? Is it some food? Is it consumable? Is it an electronic device or, you know, some, something around that would probably hint at, you know, change in customer behavior itself. Um, the most obvious reason for some product to, you know, the price to fall off is like the demand has reduced. Um, but knowing this might uh, tell us whether the drop is uh, an anomaly or is it, um, you know, or is it expected? Okay, gotcha. So, uh, given the fact that let's say that it's um, we want to dive into both paths, but let's say that um, because uh, it is like let's say like an electronic uh, mm -hmm. consumer good, right? Um, does that make it more so expected or an anomaly? Um, well, if it's uh, with an electronic device, um, assuming it's like a phone or something, right? So uh, typically when a newer phone comes out, um, the previous version will you know, drastically drop off. 
uh, the price will definitely go down. But again, uh, we, we know that it's not been happening for the past many years. And I'm sure many uh, new versions of the phone have come out, right? So yeah. probably it's not due to new uh, uh, due to a better product out there uh, or just a different version out there. It's probably to do something with um, you know the reviews on that particular product. Uh, maybe someone uh, recently had a really bad experience or you know and had a tie-in with the government agencies and some new law has been implemented, which makes the product itself not very appealing to the customer, to the end user, right? Um, maybe that's what happened, uh, and that's why the demand has fell down. And that's why the price is low. Um, of course, we can also look at with, uh, what the demand patterns have been like. Um, uh, if the demand pattern has stayed constant, but the price has reduced, um, then I would assume that it's something to do with uh, you know this uh, external information of the product, which we are not capturing. Right, the algorithm is not looking at the consumer reviews and um, what is the end user experience like. It's not tracking what laws have been implemented, which may make that device obsolete. So um, if the demand has stayed constant, but the price is still low, uh, uh, still dropping off, I would think that it's something to do with the external factors, uh, saying that some new law has implemented, uh, got implemented, which makes the product itself not viable. Um, other reasons I could think of is um, that it, uh, I'm assuming that this is a product that is getting sold or advertised on a website, right? Yeah. So maybe they change something in the UI of the website uh, where this product actually does not really show up in the search results, right? Um, maybe they change something, maybe they introduce a new feature uh, because of which this product just doesn't get the you know, highlight at all. Um, so that's why, that could be a reason for low demand though. Um, maybe, I mean, if the demand is still high, I think people would still be searching for that even though it's not showing up in the results. Um, but yeah, an indirect effect of some feature being launched could have an impact on the uh, pricing algorithm too. Okay, so let's say that we want to uh, investigate like, and then choose like a few metrics that we could look at that would then determine if uh, our hypothesis is true or not, right? So yeah. you said something back there about the, um, about like it not showing up in, you know, on search feeds or something like that. Mm -hmm. Is there any way mm -hmm. that we can uh, quantify this with some sort of uh, metric or some sort of like, uh, yeah, comparison? Yeah, um, so to, to capture the demand aspect of that product, uh, we could um, look at how many search result, uh, how many user searches in the past five months or whenever it started. Uh, we could see that, uh, you know, what is the percentage of this search query showing up, right? So if, if users were searching for like an iPhone 11 um, for five months back um, with like, you know, 80% probability, is the probability still the same? Like, you know, in the, in the later, uh, you know, past few months uh, has has there been enough uh, demand uh, just by the search terms uh, if we find that the demand has actually been enough um, then we would look at uh, the um, the results that were shown for every search query uh, from the input uh, before this time when the price fell down and after that Right. So, and then we can see that um, has has the search algorithm uh, actually changed, or at least showing a different behavior. Uh, previously, when users search for ABC, you know, product our product shows up in like the third in the list, and now it's showing maybe like in the ninth, or maybe it's not even showing, or just like a um, a percentage of you know how many searches actually sh uh, you know listed this product and how many searches did not list this product. Um, so that could um, allude to you know changes in the uh, you know ranking or the the listing uh, the output format basically. Okay, gotcha. So we talked about the demand there, and then yeah. potentially also availability of the product. Um, what about let's say that both the availability and the demand are set, and then now we want to focus on the logistics cost. So where could uh, the, it actually be in the like logistics cost that uh, is causing like a weird algorithm decrease? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, um, so yeah, I, I actually should have uh, thought about the other two features that you mentioned uh, earlier, which is the availability and the logistics cost. Um, I was assuming things are constant uh, in those terms, but yeah, uh, for sure, like if the demand stayed the same and the availability is the same, then it's probably uh, the logistic costs that have gone up um, uh, because of which 
well, it, it, it could have gone down actually because of which the prices have gone down, right? So okay. then um, that means that the company uh, has, you know, improved their logistic, uh, uh, you know, uh, infrastructure or just made some new partnership by which uh, the product is now able to be shipped out at much lower cost than before. So then in that sense, um, the uh, drop in the price is actually a benefit for the customer, right? It's not a bad thing. It's not an anomaly. It just shows that uh, whatever the company did to improve their logistics, uh, those are actually now showing at least in this particular product. Okay. So in what situations could we see like the logistics costs actually going down? Um, um, yeah. How would that yeah. work? So, so I guess um, if we have like new distribution centers, um, or suppose we do an analysis of you know where uh, which geographic region are our customers coming from for this particular product, right? Maybe the top three regions uh, for uh, where the demand for this particular product is the highest is like on the west coast, and um, then we look at where did we uh, ship, where did we historically used to ship this product from? Maybe it was getting shipped from somewhere central U.S., right? And now, uh, and then we see that okay, now actually. In the last two months, uh, there was a new distribution center um, out in the West, and now that uh, you know reduces the time for the for the delivery of the product to the customer. And now that we have it already stocked up in the distribution center in the West, um, our logistic costs are also lower, right? So new distribution centers popping up or new uh, partnerships with like freight forwarding companies, uh, those could uh, indicate that okay, now our, that is why our logistic costs have gone down. Okay. So I know you mentioned more distribution centers, right? Is that distributing to the website? Is that from going from the distribution to the consumer? Or yeah. is that going from the manufacturer to the distribution site? Um, well, the, the, the distribution center that I was mentioning was from the distribution center to the consumer. But of course, um, if there are some changes on where we source the uh, product from, uh, that also will play a part in logistic costs. So acquiring the product, um, maybe uh, before we used to, you know, sh uh, import these products out from a different country, which was really far away, and um, you know, and then it had to domestically travel to the customer. Now maybe we have a better uh, a contract with the, uh, with the with the company that we source these products from. So mm -hmm. then that improves our logistic cost. It could also be that we just have found a, a different supplier uh, who is able to get us um, the same product at a lower cost because of their geographical location. Now, so those aspects would also bring down our logistic cost. Gotcha. Okay, cool. And then last question I have is, let's say that the price, uh, we are, you know, underpricing this product, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you've done all the analysis, what would you come away with? Uh, how would you decide to, if you should actually go back and adjust the price manually or keep it as it should be? A um, couple of things which come to mind are like, you know, assuming it's, um, you know, assuming our and the company's end goal is to uh, make sure that the customers, the end consumers are happy and not the suppliers, then uh, as long as we have a consistent demand for the product and we are able to ship it out and, you know, um, and we are able to have a lower cost structure for the end consumer, I would not want to change anything on the pricing algorithm. I think it's doing a good job because we are not seeing any, we, we're not seeing our customers leave our platform, right? They still want to purchase the same product from us. So we are still gaining profits. And, um, uh, and, and, and it's because of a logistic costs that have been reduced, we're able to offer the product at a lower price. So I would not change anything in that aspect. Now, um, the, the cases where I would uh, uh, try to manually intervene would be where, you know, that I'm seeing that the demand has actually gone down. And that is why, uh, no, I, I'm seeing that the logistic costs are have increased, but my price of the product has gone down. So that shows me that you know there's something uh, some uh, fundamental change in the logistics supply chain that we are doing because of which this is happening right the the algorithm ha did not uh, previously um, you know weight the logistic cost enough maybe it had a very um, less weightage at that time and now uh, the logistic costs have increased but the algorithm is not able to you know uh, take that effect into account so i would probably retrain my model saying that you know okay logistic cost is pretty important for us and you need and you know try to put in some more weight into it um, so that would be a manual intervention at that point i think um, i am not aware of any automatic um, 
um, automatic like uh, solutions that can you know find an error and then fix it apart from like you know using some kind of a feed forward loop or something in your model of course it depends on what model is but um, maybe there is some uh, area of improvement to automate that part uh, if you use some kind of a feedback uh, loop in your model which takes into account the difference between uh, you know a price one year back and price today or something like that all right cool gotcha I think that is good for that question. Awesome. Okay. Now, in terms of retrospective, what did you think about uh, that question? Um, I think the discussion went into a lot of um, exploring different aspects uh, from my side, uh, saying that you know maybe this is the possible reason, maybe that is the reason, but. I guess we didn't really get into a very concrete uh, solution at the end. Um, like we we didn't come to an uh, we didn't discuss anything about what the actual uh, algorithm is. Like we should maybe if if we had started off saying that it's suppose it's a regression algorithm, right? Suppose it's a neural network that's implemented, and then we could uh, dig deeper into you know the actual weights or actual layers that are being used and stuff like that. Yeah. But again, um, we were uh, still discussing of what all possible uh, outcomes could be there. Um, so from that point, we explored it well. Uh, but I guess in an interview, it depends on what the interviewer wants to hear. Uh, he may give me more information so that I'm you know, going towards a particular outcome. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. 